DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. <laughs> Do what? All the time. Do what? I don't right know. You're live. We're, we're live right now. Right now. Quick, stop swearing. Oh, wait. No, we're supposed to do an opening. Oh, Jimmy. Hey, wait a second. Jimmy said, John, get me, get me some, some, you know, a, a voiceover. So, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's I Got Five on it with Shady and Dan. There, I did. Was my opening in, in there? I'm Jimmy so, said I would have my opening. Well, he he was working on it today, and he's like, "Get me, get me some voiceover." And it's working like, on it today, and my show is today. It's mm, like, well, Jimmy, I'm kind of mowing lawn today and chopping mm. up leaves, and then shooting mm. this, that, and the Last other thing. Minute. Mm, okay. Last minute. I'll have it 2019. It's cool. Okay. <laughs> I told you I'm just going to have Fortnite dancing behind me. But I was told I was going to have my opening by today. So I decided not to do Fortnite dancing because I thought I had my opening. Uh, you know. So you don't have your opening. Let's see that dance. Come on, Shaney. No, no. I was having dancers, dancers behind me was dancing. what I said. Because I don't know if you know this, Dan. I'm the only show that doesn't have an opening. Hey, wait a minute. I, I think I'm in this show with you. I yeah, know, yeah, you know, you're just you're just there. We're the only show that doesn't have an opening. Yeah, really? Yeah. <sighs> Let's see. Wait a second. Dan there... didn't watch our show last last week. There's a band. There's <laughs> we a band talked about. No, Dan Dan was sick last week. <laughs> Dan was hurting last week. Yeah. Oh, there are two Johns. John, you're double. <laughs> you're double on the screen. <laughs> that was the shot from earlier. Right, ladies and gentlemen, it's John and John. Yeah, that's right. And I'm going to argue with myself. This is going to be a fun show. How did I do that? That's kind of cool, though. <laughs> Happy Halloween. It's like a mirror in a mirror in a mirror effect. <laughs> and cue my 10-minute Halloween song I gave you guys. <laughs> the creepy music is in the background. So, we're back. Okay, well, let's get her going. Okay. So, everybody, first off, welcome that that interesting rant that we just had uh if you didn't quite quite catch on uh we are doing shane has got five on it five wonderful topics and um john's even giving you kind of a little tease all right if you look down in the listings down below in the description um the five topics are there but don't look ahead because well then then you're like looking and reading and you're not listening and that's just not the way that we wanted to do this show so you need to stick around. You need to listen because she's going to divulge some awesome, awesome information for us. Right? Sure. Awesome. And then, and then if she's really good and you ask her very nicely, maybe she will Fortnite dance behind her at the same time because she's cool like that. So number one, number one is the group kiss. Keep it short, stupid. Oh, 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 the rock band. Gotcha. That's what kiss um, means. You've never been told that you I used to tell girls when they want to know what a kiss is. I'm very confused. You never heard that before? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I've oh. never heard the uh, the abbreviation of kiss stands for keep it, it keep short. Keep it short, stupid. Yep. Yeah. And that yep. was a big thing. Really? Coach, coaching and teaching. That was a big thing. Yeah. I suppose in the business realm, too, it was. What are we keeping short, though? Like uh, speeches, um, descriptions, I, I heard and training, and sermons. And lessons or in, in, a, in a coaching world is keep it simple stupid because of like when you're teaching kids how to do things on the athletic field you want to make it so it's the simplest moves as possible teaching the basics so keep it simple stupid was so. nobody's ever said that to me wow. in sports or anything wow then you must always keep it short and simple and you're good yeah, right. you must be <laughs> <laughs> have you not met me <laughs> I was trying to give you a benefit of the doubt, but if you're going to call yourself out on it, then have you I never got a voicemail from me ever? I talk to myself in people's voicemails. All right, no, I haven't. Is, um, number one, yes, is Kiss. They are doing now. I know. I think the last tour they called it the farewell tour, but supposedly this is the real farewell tour. 
I think it's kind of like Cher. How many tours did Cher do as her farewell tour? Yeah, and she's well, still going back on Yeah, tour. she had her Social Security one, then she had her Medicare tour, and then I believe she had her Help I Fall and I Can't Get Up necklace tour. So, yeah, she had a few. Okay, well, this supposedly is the KISS farewell tour. And what is interesting about this and why it's kind of a little bit of a big deal is the former members of KISS might be rocking the stage with everybody. So the, the, the like members that are no longer with KISS and that are still living, I should say, um, hopefully are going to be rocking the stage with the current members. Uh, Paul Stanley is the one that dropped the news. And he's the one that said that the it's called the end of the road tour and that starting next year, it might include some of the extra members from the past. Now, I believe there are only four living um, older members that are, are not playing with them. Uh, four of them are guitarist and one of them is a drummer. So we'll see. If if everybody if anybody's a big Kiss fan and they want to go to the on the tour to see what's going on, they might see all the members up on stage rocking it out with them. Yeah. Cool, very I, cool. I, I didn't even realize that uh, that they were more. I, I knew one, of course, was was gone, but I didn't. Uh... Yeah. So the 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 four living members: um, Ace Farley, Vinny Vincent, Bruce. Kolik, if I'm saying his name right, I don't remember. And the drummer is Peter uh, Chris, C R I S S, Chris. Um, so those guys might be on tour with them. Yeah. So it would be cool if you guys were like the old Kiss fans and, you know, those members are, you know, not playing with them anymore to kind of see them on stage again, the, the original members with them. I wonder if that's, it's probably not enough to call it a trend, but I almost wonder if that's kind of, Something I, I saw another concert, um, Europe, it was about, I don't know, six months ago, maybe now, where they did the same thing, where it was like, you know, we've had X amount of, of different people that have been part of this band. So we're all going to go on tour and we're going to bring them all out. Almost kind of like a way to, to kind of. Well, the ones probably that are still in good graces with each other, because there was a lot of band members in certain bands that the reason why they're not there anymore is because nobody, nobody liked them anymore. Yeah, they kind of so. got that. Yeah, so you got to have that consensus of, do I want to be on stage rocking with, with somebody that I didn't like from, from the past? So we'll see. It'll be, it'll be kind of cool for that. So we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. They have any idea 2019, I would assume, summer? Um, I don't know. They just said it's called the End of the Road Tour, and it starts next year. They didn't give me a date or anything. So we'll, we'll see. Okay. Yeah. End of the Road. So opening will be Boys to Men, right? <laughs> and the three of them. Sorry, we're, we're dancing now. Okay, so uh, number two. Number two. Now, number two, I have talked about this in the past, and um, I talked about Tom Petty before. Um, I believe, like, probably my either last month or the month before. October 26th, mm -hmm. Christmas album? <laughs> that would be kind of weird, though. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Petty swapping a Christmas album. Yeah. And it's a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> on October 26th last week yes and it'll be a hologram well I now have the date of the big release for his best of everything collection the date is so if you guys are a big Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker fan or just Tom Petty the date is November 16th that will be the best of everything hits collection that I know I've talked about in the past and just didn't have the date and I kept saying it was going to be towards the end of the year um, it covers quite literally everything <laughs> that that their songs covered. So it includes him with the Heartbreakers and his solo work that he's done. And it's 38 tracks and it also includes two unreleased tracks and some other surprises. So if you are a big Tom Petty fan, this is definitely a collection you're going to want to get. That's I mean, it's called the best of everything for a reason. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Is it really the best of everything when you have 38 tracks? Yeah, with certain artists, yeah. Okay. I can yeah. see. I can see that. He's got quite a few. But yeah. in this day and age, when I can go pick and choose, I could probably, except for those extra tracks, I mean, I could go and pick and choose and probably get 30 of those 38 tracks. I, I just wonder, unless they're going to put it to vinyl, 
Right. But even CD is, would be a waste. I don't think anybody, you know, people aren't buying CDs. Unless they do like a big collector's type series, maybe a, a book is included with it yeah. or pamphlets or pictures. You know how some, sometimes they used to do like those big, like time life collector series type things. Yeah. Maybe it'll be something like that that you can find on um, the PBS channel and get your tote bag. <laughs> You're I still feeling it. jaded by PBS, aren't you? I got the PBS tote bag. Woo! <laughs> they still call me and contact me. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that and how it, it goes on the charts. You know, it might be, it might hit like the number one album. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, you know, John, you, you did talk, I mean, you were talking about the picking and choosing it. And I think there's probably something to be said. I doubt it's going to go for $38. I mean, depending upon it, there's that extra collector's tin or, you know, time life type of series with it um, to where that could that could make a difference. But if for some reason you were, you know, you don't have that collection and you decide now's the time that you're going to pick it up. It could be one of those where you take advantage of it for 20, 25 bucks and, you, you know, you save a little bit. And here you pick up all these ones that you didn't think about because you weren't getting requests for Tom Petty. And now right. you suddenly are because he's gone. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. It's been gone for a year and it hasn't affected my playlist whatsoever. So I'm just, gone. well, you know, I, I'm trying to be optimistic here, John. I'm trying two, to two unreleased uh, songs and some surprises. You never know. Maybe, the very end. Maybe I'm some of uh, Prince's songs showed up. <sighs> on the, as a surprise on the B side. The B side. Prince writing some tracks for Tom Petty. This could be big. He could be free falling in his purple rain. And Tupac's new album. Stuck in there. <laughs> All done in hologram. It'll be great. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my goodness. One house hologram on the box. <laughs> uh, you know what? I am excited though. We got number three here. And number three, what is the topic of number three, Dan? Win app. When app, we're going a little old school right now. What for those Rips that the don't... llamas? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. What is what? What do people say about Win app? That it's the best DJ software next to, next to. Um, yes, you say it. Say it. Next to what? See, I, told, I said next to Mega Seg. I, I told everyone that tonight we would be talking about Winamp, and I was really disappointed because we could have really been covering the bases, but no, we're not. Okay, Winamp, go ahead. Oh, you know, when it tops the software list, I mean, you, you can't go backwards to that other, you know. If I, if I can yeah. have some stuff to talk about for your software, I will be more than happy to <laughs> say it. it out every time I, we could do like a reggae air horn every time I, I say the word. I wish I had it. Okay. Well, Win app for those that have never heard of it or know about it from from before or maybe still using it, I don't know. For those that don't know, I'm going to tell you, it's been around for 21 years. Goodness. It's a 21-year-old media player. And for those that don't know, it's making a comeback for 2019, ladies and gentlemen. Not that it what disappeared, but it's it's kind of like the the Hercules controller I talked about and tractor and stuff like that. Like they're just going to be making like a big big to do right now. So it's making a comeback next year, and it's coming back as an audio mobile app for for people. And you could put all your music, your podcast, your streaming services, everything all in one place. <coughs> completely new version for 2019 and it's coming both to um the os and the android so depending on what phone you have you definitely can can put it on your smartphone and they're also going to be doing a new desktop version called the win app 6 hmm. so this app is going to come out first and then they're going and then after that i don't have a date for the desktop version but then the desktop version is going to be coming out afterwards. So I'll be honest, I, I actually still use the the desktop version because it loads a heck of a lot faster than a lot of people do. A lot of people do, and they say again, I'm not talking DJing. I'm talking right. personal, personal, personal yeah. stuff. And they're saying that the new desktop version is just going to for people that actually still use it or used it in the past. They're just going to look at this one and be like, "Whoa, I'm." 
blown away. So Dan, is that a guilty confession of, yes, I still use Winamp type of a thing that, you, that we just had? So both, yeah, a little bit. Because, both because, because, I mean, now. Huh? He's got his uh, mega. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. He's got his guilty confession. So this would be mine. Yeah. Is that, is that kind, what we're getting at, John? Kind of getting. You guys both have guilty confessions right now. I'm kind of getting. I at guess. It's just saying that's, uh, you know, it's kind of there. We found John and Dan's guilty confessions. <sighs> he, they're my confessions. It, it loads a heck of a lot faster than anything else I got on my computer. So yeah, I'm gonna still use it for just previewing a song. <laughs> yeah. So for those that, like I said, used to use it or still using it or want to start using it again, 2019 is making its comeback with some bells and whistles for you guys. I so, heard they might even have a controller that works with it. Just kidding. Oh, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Fisher Price one that we've been, you know, trying to get on the show for Shani, it works with one. Speaking yes. of which, I forgot to bring that with me to Atlantic City. Oh, that would have been awesome. That would have been pretty awesome. Remind me next year. I will bring it with me. I'm going to be in the hallway. We'll do like a little setup with a, like a, a hat in front of me. <laughs> DJ for dollars. With the, with the, with the Fisher yeah, Price. Yeah, the Fisher Price uh, record player and the t pain microphone. I'm it, done. I got my own party going on. <laughs> the best party in go. town. I'm safe. All right, and before we get to um, number four, I think we got to do some stuff, right, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much for uh, sticking with us and, and, and being, Baron, they were with us. We, I, we got some great stuff because while we started off with the first three and, you know, they were good ones, they were good ones. They're nothing like the last two, like the last two. Like if, if the first three were here, the last two are like up there. Ooh. Not that I'm overselling it or anything. <laughs> it's going to be that cool. I'm telling you. Actually, I'm, I'm curious because I've heard rumors about number four. Like, like well, I've seen some, and nobody's really getting the the right stuff right. I should say. <laughs> well, I've seen the subject lines. Let me put it that way. And I've yeah. never really dove into it. And then when I, I saw it pop up on on our discussion for tonight, I'm like, good. Shane's gonna tell me all about it, so I don't have to do any more reading. Good. There you go. That's what I'm here for, guys. I'm here to tell you guys about the stuff, so you don't have to. You don't have to do the research. I am I am your your Wikipedia. That no, uh, you know, that could be weird and kind of yeah. creepy. Just You're saying. just our Google. I'm Google. Okay, I'm yeah, sorry. That, that, I don't know. Okay, I'm Alexa. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. The the Siri. Yeah, or Alexa. I, I was gonna try and make a new name with it, but I, I know, I know, I know. Like, anyway. Yeah. So. Alexa, tell me what Cheney says. I guess we'll do it that way. All right. So number four, there has been a lot of talk about this and people just kind of take the headlines and then they think they know what it is. And it's really funny because nobody really reads into it. And I was all over social media reading some people's stuff. And it's, it's quite interesting when people don't know what a subject really is about and they just kind of give their two cents <laughs> and i'm like no boo boo that's not even what it's about but it's cool so serato is launching into the streaming um integration uh boat i should say now a lot of people think that means what virtual dj is doing where you can live stream they are incorrect. <laughs> and that's what a lot of people are been talking about all over social media. Oh, they're just trying to be like virtual DJ and they're trying to live stream. And it's like, no, live stream and streaming 
you guys didn't like read the whole thing of what is going on with Serato. So for those that don't know, Serato used to have a streaming service, its own, that was called Pulse Locker. And I know we've talked about it on the show. And then we also talked about how Pulse Locker went and it was no longer and everybody who were members, I should, I guess I could call members of Pulse Locker got the email that said, we are so sorry, but we are uh, no longer in business. You will get the busy signal when you call us kind of, kind of like, you know, a Toys R Us and, and stuff like that. And that's made us kind of, I know that made me cry. It's okay. Jeffrey's in, in Florida. I'm, I'm assuming Jeffrey's in Florida at a pool with his giraffe family. Retired. He's retired. retired on the beach somewhere with his little hoofies up in the air. Yeah, playing bingo and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, Serato decided, now this is kind of weird for me. Now, Serato decided to get back in the streaming service, which is awesome for those people that not only, and I'm going to say this the way I want to say this, not only use their, their real own music, but then for some other stuff, use the streaming music and don't rely DJs on streaming music. So what they decided to do is their upcoming releases of Serato DJ Pro and Serato DJ Lite will allow you to stream music from two different places. The companies that they decided to bring on board with them are SoundCloud and Tidal. Those are the two streaming services that they will say, hey, you want to get these downloads, you, you listen to this stuff, these are, you know, this kind of music you want and you, you want to bring it into your DJing, that's great. We're partnering with SoundCloud and we're partnering with Tidal. So, of course, you know, just like how it was with Pulse Locker, if you want to do this, you need subscriptions to either one of them or both services to do it. And they've already said that SoundCloud has a Go Plus subscription for $9.99 a month and Tidal will have a two-tier membership so you can decide what you want for Tidal. And they're both offering 30-day trials. So you can check it out you know, and decide like, hey, this is helping me with some of those hard to find songs or some some SoundCloud music that is just some of these from these producers or DJs that are producing that are awesome and I can just use it and nobody's heard of it. Um, and just so you guys know that our virtual DJ and Tractor users in the future, SoundCloud will also be coming to Tractor and Virtual DJ, but it will not be coming to Record Box. Hmm. Hmm. So now that is my big two cents on the synopsis <laughs> of what Serato is launching with the streaming services, and now we can talk about it. I liked half of what you said. Okay. With with regards to it, um, I, I liked. Initially, as you're talking about it and, and the deal with SoundCloud, I'm like, okay, you know, because within the SoundCloud, there, there's not a lot of options within it for downloading. You know, you have some of the artists who have that set up and, you know, and I'm talking about kind of the, the more obscure stuff or, or the, you know, the different remixes that you like that you just can't just go grab um, with that without some weird 30 party trick on it. Um, so, so I like the fact that it's there. My personal thought, though, is I don't see SoundCloud as worth ten bucks a month to DJ from. Now I don't know title. Title, I'll be honest, that's a, that's a new name for me. But I don't see SoundCloud as anything worth ten bucks a month to to play from. Not when not when Spotify, not when some of these other ones are that same price. Like I don't look at them on the same tier. And I realized to DJ with. Spotify, you're having some other workarounds. Um, I don't know. What, do you, what are your thoughts there? As I was just, uh, just bounced out to title because I was thinking, it's like, will I know any of the songs? Some of the artists, but there are very, very few songs that. I... Title is Jay Z's. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's Jay Z's uh, mm. brand. And remember oh. when the Carter's album came out, when I first told you guys that that one dropped, it dropped on title and it didn't okay. drop first so jay-z still has that kind of bond with a lot of artists that 
are trying to drop their, you know, kind of like Apple Music and all that stuff where they're trying to drop their tracks just on somebody's streaming service first. And Jay-Z does have that rapport with a lot of artists. Um, but again, you know, my whole thing is, yeah, of course, everybody keeps talking about Spotify, just like, you know, when we go to like mobile beat, everybody talks about well, why couldn't they get this artist? You know, why do they have to get that artist? Come on, guys, let's think about it. You know, maybe in the future, Spotify is going to be one of the streaming ser services, yeah. but there's a reason why it isn't right now. And these are the two streaming services that they are doing. Um, but for those people that do, and I, I don't, I'm going to play the devil's advocate for those people that do rely on streaming services, they can now do it again with Serato if that was their big thing with it. But but again, within those two services, yeah, we're not, have a problem. Talking, we're not talking no. big, enough, big enough library to choose from, I think, for that. No. But so in some ways, it could save, you know, I don't want to say save them, but um, if if it did suddenly go out in a year, you know, it wouldn't have. The, I don't think it'd have the same effect. Although, I don't know. I mean, if if enough people are doing that, maybe it's going to be a bigger pull. Maybe that's what SoundCloud is thinking by jumping on board with this. Is you know, maybe we'll get more clout because what was it, a year and a half ago when they went through that whole pullback and then on, on what they were allowing as far as their copyrights and everything else, and now they're like, okay, well now we can, but it's so big and oh. I'm, just, I'm just not buying it yet i don't i don't know oh, sure sure and i think this is their step into getting into the streaming world again like how i said before when they had pulse locker and then you know but pulse locker did get um bought up by bport as i i think i told you guys that a couple months ago yeah, yeah. um so they just decided to go with these two streaming services. And like I said, virtual DJ and tractor will be on board with SoundCloud in the, in the near future as well. So something about SoundCloud that's got them all, you know, jumping. Maybe that's like, you know, their, their trial run, maybe we'll call it. I, I don't know. I, I can't speak for them, but their, their trial run first to see how it goes. And then hopefully they'll, you know, jump for those people that I hate to say it, rely on the streaming or, want a DJ off the streaming, then they'll get into the, the other streaming services. Hmm. All right. So number five, number five, number five is very interesting. Um, for those that do or don't know about the trade wars that, that have been going on, it, it definitely is going has, and is going to hit, the DJ industry, if you haven't noticed it already, but um, I'm talking about for those people that live in the United States that follow us here for, for those that live in other countries, um, you guys can listen and do the evil laugh. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about this because <laughs> you don't have to deal with the U S trade wars <laughs> and just kind of, you know, put your hand, put your hands on your hips and tilt your head back and, you know, and, and do that, that evil clown laugh at us. But as you guys know, with what's going on with Trump's trade wars, many manufacturers outside of the DJ world right now, let's, you know, we got to call it, they, they, their products are built in China. And I'm not even talking about the DJ world right now. I'm just talking about manufacturer consumer products. A lot of them are built in China and the DJ gear is no exception. And I'm not talking about buying the Chinese lights and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, some of the name brand DJ gear that you guys get, parts and things like that. And a lot of it is coming out of, a ch out of China and that's why it's hitting our industry. So um, a lot of DJ brands have already increased their price a little bit because of the trade war. And you guys not maybe not have realized it, but like before when I used to, when I was giving you guys prices of like new controllers that were coming out and things like that, if you look now, if you look at the price that I gave you guys, maybe the beginning of September to now, I'm sure there probably is at least a 10% increase of, of those prices. And it's all because of what's going on. So right now, a lot of the companies are saying that they've increased by 
And I don't know if this is a rumor, but of course it's circulating on the internet. So, you know, it's true. No, it's circulating on the internet. So we'll have to see what happens, but they are saying by the end of the year, it might even be a 25% increase. I don't know how much of that is true, but it's going to be up there. Um, the new tariff, if you guys don't know, it did start September 24th. So that's when all of this kind of hit the industry. And the increase right now has been about 10%. And by, like I said, by the end of 2018, it might even be a 25%. Um, the president of Pioneer has already put out like a little, uh, he's already put out um, a statement saying that, yeah, we've had an increase. Um, for instance, when the, DJ, the DDJ SX3 came out, the original price was $9.99. And we talked about that. As of October 15th, when I checked, it's now $1,000. One, one, hi, I can speak. Yep. Yes, $1.99. So it's, it went up $99. So things are going up and other, other companies are following suit with it. Um, companies like Mackey, companies like Chave, Companies like Ultimate Support and a lot of other companies are going to have to do that increase. So my two cents to you is kind of that Russian roulette game. If you guys are thinking about buying some products, I would say maybe look into it before the end of the year. And they can also go on your taxes then. But look into it you know, before the end of the year and, and see because you might be paying yeah. a little bit a little bit over. Um, 20, 20%, 25% by the end of the year. Mm. And it's, yeah, it's, yeah. And there's, and if you think about it, there is a very, very minute number. And I, yes, I said minute, mm. minute number of companies that are really all in the United States. Yes. Everything is built. Everything, every part, everything is built. And, you know, <laughs> People still want to buy those brands that they always buy. So it's like, we got to see how, what's going to happen with this. And it, it's, it sucks. It really does. This, this is going to take a toll on the U S and on the DJ world. So it's like, now people got to think, Oh, do I need to up my prices now for the upcoming year? If I didn't already do it, you know, I got clients that are booking for 2019. How do I increase my prices now? So it's like, you got to think, what you guys are going to do, but just wanted to, for those that didn't know, I just kind of want to put a bug in people's ear that look at shop and compare, look at the things that you want to look at now and, and start to make your Christmas list out. And don't wait till Christmas to buy it. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, you hit it and some of the people in the chat room hit it. I mean, it, it comes down to one of those things where if you were sitting on the fence on something, you either going to have to to move on it or expect that your prices are going to go up. And, and it's just, it's, it's a product of, you know, you, some people are going to be quick to blame the companies for, for doing it, or, or they're going to be quick to blame, you know, political figures for doing it. And, and regardless of what it is, it's, it's kind of a nature of everything that's going into one, you know, one little piece affects another piece, which affects another piece. And so everybody's got a hand in what's causing it. And, uh, yeah, the companies have a profit margin that they want to be able to make. And if that means it's going to cost more, they're going to charge more. And, and we've got to learn to either accept it or, you know, I guess the alternative is not not get that new new equipment. But right. we know that's not going to happen. But, right. And, and I mean, think about it this way, guys. You know, I hope you've increased your prices from a couple years ago. And that's what's happening with the equipment now. There's an increase in the equipment. So, you know, maybe if you still want that, you got to figure out a happy balance. Like, I want this. I know I'm going to pay a little extra. Maybe it's time for me to, to step up my game a little bit and finally, you know, increase those prices around the board or something. I'm not telling you how to run your business, but just know if you are going to buy equipment and... I, I hope this doesn't stop you from buying DJ equipment because if you always bought new equipment every two years, every three years, every four years, whatever, I hope you're still doing it for, for your own sake and for your business sake and everything. So it'll, it'll be interesting what really happens with these companies, John 
What, what are your thoughts? I think you're going to see, I, I doubt highly if this is going to go much into 2019. I think there's going to be some changes in the, in the way things are going because we we're seeing it in the farming world up here because that's, we're kind of in that area where there's a lot of that going on and how there's groups, businesses, what have you that are starting to work around the process. So there's either going to be workarounds that are going to start to happen within this, or they're going to get to the point where the, comp the countries are going to solve their, their problems. Yeah, it might mean that 2019, there's going to be some price increases and such, but I don't think you're going to see, I, I, I think there's a little a level of the scare tactics that are going on here, uh, especially just ahead of a, uh, an election cycle. So I really, yeah, if you're looking for something, what's, what they have in stock right now is going to be cheaper than the next stuff. There's no question about it. So if you have to buy something in the next six months, it's better to buy now than later. But if you're not in the... If you're not going to be in the mood or, or in a position to buy something until late 2019, it, you're probably going to be just fine. In a worst case scenario, drive across the border into Canada between exchange rates and Canadian uh, no tariffs in, with the Canadian things, unless you're you know, there's southern but no gear like that. You'd be able to buy it cheaper there, and then you just have to figure out how you're going to get it across the border because customs will kill you. And poor Scott, who lives in Florida, is going to be like, okay, John, I'm just going to drive up to Oh, wait. Yeah, exactly. How many hours does that to get there? Oh, yeah. That's right. It's a long way. That's okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It, it really will. But, I mean, it's just like, you know, anything else. The, the, the cost of living, the cost of, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. The cost of food. The cost, You know, it's like, it's just, it's the necessity for us. So, just keep in mind, guys, just like John said, if you're thinking about buying something in the next six months, I would think about buying it now. A lot of places do have like payment plans and stuff like that. I mean, they don't have like layaway like Kmart, but there are, you know, payment plans you guys can do because I don't want January, February to hit and you guys are like, oh God, I was looking at this before and it was this price, you know, kind of like eBay and now it's up to this and I should have, I should have gotten it. So think about that. But just like you said, if you're not, if you're not, you're good for the next year or something, then, then don't worry about it. But you heard it here first, guys. So, well, not first from the world, but first if you're watching the show. So please do what you want to do with this information, if that kind of makes sense. Mark uh, Mark mentioned something here in the, in the uh, YouTube chat room yeah. that once they raise their prices, they won't lower them later. I think that's, that's not going to be accurate because we've now entered into this global world where a lot of these direct – sellers are selling through Amazon and you can see and buy many of these things. And I think as Amazon continues to take more of a hold on the U.S. economy and has people used to shopping, I don't think that you're going to be able to see more entry level or, or less expensive lights. As an example, you're not going, they're not going to be able to go and raise them a hundred dollars and then stay there because now they're still going to have to eventually, once the tariffs and things are, are dealt with, they're going to have to compete with that $50 version of that $200 light. They're not the same quality most likely, but they're going to have to compete with it. And there's sometimes you've just have to bite the bullet and drop your prices back down to a closer margin between the two. So it'll be cool. interesting. It will be interesting. It's definitely a, kind of a, a, a somber, a somber note. To yeah, we ended we ended on a down note. Yeah. <sighs> um, want some more Halloween songs? I mean, what, <laughs> <laughs> what wait a minute, wait a minute. What? You didn't do them last week. No. Don't do you, you owe me? Do you want to wait? Do you want to? You want them now, or you want to wait till our next show? Yeah, we should probably wait till next week. We're forty minutes in. Yeah. Already. Okay. okay. We'll, well wait. Actually, we'll wait to the next. I have some Thanksgiving songs for you guys. We're gonna wait on those though. We'll we'll bring those up yeah the next time we get together. And just like I gave you the Halloween songs that were off the wall and not Michael Jackson off the wall, but off the wall, crazy off the wall. I got some Thanksgiving ones for you guys too that you could play in the background while you are eating your turkey. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. So everybody, here's the deal. Uh, coming up here in just a few moments, John's going to drop a link into the chat room, Facebook, and wherever else he decides that he would like to put it. Um, you follow that link, and then you get to kind of join us in this little Brady Bunch type of chat for a little while. Uh, we'll be talking about some other things, maybe some recapping some stuff from the weekend, um, talking about events, and just kind of hanging out for a little while. Uh, so make sure you follow that. 
We'd love to see you there. If for some reason you can't, though, we will catch you next show. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to Facebook and all that for all the links, the times, and all the good stuff that goes with it. Thank you very much for tuning in. You guys, if you are joining us, we'll see you in a few moments. And if not, have a good night.